Because time has expired, I thank the member for Fowler. The question is, the amendment be agreed to, and I call the member for Forest. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I want to speak on the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission bill, uh, and I want to firstly support the wonderful aged care providers in my electorate, and I want to thank their staff who genuinely care for their residents and often spend many hours over and above their actual shifts caring for people. One of the toughest decisions you make as a loving family member is the decision you need to have or have to make when your parent or grandparent needs high level or permanent care, especially when your mum or dad doesn't want to go into care or is struggling to understand why they need to go into high level care. It's, a re it's just a traumatic time and one our family faced when our much loved mother's Alzheimer's made it impossible for her to live at home. She fell in an aged care home while on respite and broke her hip, and then she fell in hospital and broke her spine. She did not walk again and actually couldn't remember that she couldn't walk and needed high care. It actually broke our hearts to have to make the decision to put mum into an aged care facility. And we know that we broke her heart as well, because this was the last place that she wanted to be. We'd already had that discussion. And in spite of the fact that our family knew there was no alternative, we do carry that hurt today. And I know that's the same for so many families that I speak to. Given mum's condition and how much we loved her, my sister and I decided that one of us would visit her every single day and spend as much time as possible with her. We knew it would not be possible for the staff to spend the amount of time with her that we thought she needed. We also knew that with her Alzheimer's, for her, the only real thing that she recognised in her surroundings every day was us. Her long-term memory kept us in her mind. My sister and I did an Alzheimer's workshop to better understand how to help her. We learned that in the time where she was mattered far less than who was looking after her. Some of the staff were just amazing, wonderfully caring people. And the nights they were left on duty, or they were on duty, we left the, the uh, nursing home with a smile on our faces. On other nights, I would cry on the way home, knowing she would have a long and lonely night. Because she couldn't walk and was at great risk of falls, my mother was strapped into her chair and her bed. One night she tried to get out of the bed but became entangled in those straps. She hung over the side of that bed in these straps for far too long. She bruised much of her body between the bed and the floor, suffered a stroke and died several days later in 2002. The staff were not allowed to talk at all to us about what had happened or how. Mama died at night and we were told that we could clean out her room the next morning. We, told, we were told we had until 11 a.m. to do so. But when we got to the aged care facility, first thing, we were early. Her belongings were in a black plastic bag on a trolley and another family was already inspecting and in her room. What we also saw in the whole time one was in this facility was that some of the other residents never had one visitor. My sister and I frequently did the rounds to simply say hello to those lonely people. And there were some staff members who also spent as much time as possible with them. And we know how we treat our senior and elder Australians is a measure of our society. We were taught to respect our elders, most particularly the elderly who need our care. This need for respect and care applies to all of us as well, not just those who are staff in aged care facilities. It applies to each one of us, the family members, the friends, the people in our community, as well as those entrusted with the care of our seniors, the formal care. There are different models of care depending on different cultures. In some countries, um, families have elderly relatives living with them like many in the Italian community, 
We see this both in Italy and in places like my hometown of Harvey, with its strong Italian population, where local families do everything they can to keep their loved and respected older family members in their homes as long as possible. Some people, like those I've met in India, have several generations living in the same home—grandparents, parents, children and grandchildren. Others build facilities to provide care, facilities like we see in our electorates around Australia. With the calling of a Royal Commission into the aged care sector, our government is determined to ensure the care of elderly Australians in aged care facilities is of the highest quality. This Royal Commission will primarily look at the quality of care provided in residential and home aged care to senior Australians, but also include, and I think this is particularly important, young Australians with disabilities living in residential aged care settings. This is really important, Mr Deputy Speaker, providing care for young people with severe disabilities. One fantastic example of care for young people with disabilities is Treendale Gardens in Australind in my electorate. And I hope this model is considered by the Royal Commission as a model for delivering future projects around Australia. This project combined the then Liberal State Government, local Rotary Club of South Bunbury and the Multiple Sclerosis Society, and was the result of the persistence and hard work of John Castrilli while he was the Liberal MLA for Bunbury. John Castrilli worked closely with Leanne Ma and Marcus Stafford, the CEO of MSWA. With John's strong advocacy, the then WA Liberal government provided the land. MS committed to building, equipping and operating the facility. And what a great model this is. The state government working with a genuine organisation geared towards and with the experience in delivering services to the community. This should be the model explored by the Royal Commission and Government to deliver services Australia-wide for young people. MS built double the originally planned capacity. They saw the need. MS then committed to further investment in our region, building another facility in Bunbury, as well as providing additional services to the community. In my opinion, this is a win-win model. People throughout the South West really understand how important it is that we now have the first high care facility for young people outside the Perth metro area. There was and is a very real need for this facility. Local girl Kylie Berryman was only young when she had a major car accident. She suffered severe brain trauma and needed permanent care. Her mother, Helen DeMarty, worked tirelessly with John Castrilli to find the right facilities for her daughter. But unfortunately, both Helen and Kylie passed away before Helen was able to see their realisation of her dream with the facility in Treendale. John, in his speech at the opening of the facility, said, A dream came true today, Treendale Gardens, an accommodation and respite facility for people who have high care needs due to disabilities but are too young to live in nursing homes. The Rotary Club of, Bun of South Bunbury contributed over $82,000 to the project. These were the proceeds from their charity house project that involved an enormous amount of work by club members and, as always with this type of project, very generous and direct support by lo the local business community. In this respect, I also want to acknowledge and thank key contributors and Rotary members Kevin, Annette, Terry and Jennifer Coote. Um, and it was land at their Treendale development that was bought by the then state government to build Treendale Gardens. In relation to aged care, Mr Deputy Speaker, it is really important to put the facts on the record. Funding for aged care is at record levels. In 2017-18 alone, aged care spending is uh, estimated to reach $18.6 billion, and funding will grow over the next five years by $5 billion. $1.6 billion has been provided to create an additional 20,000 uh, higher needs home care packages, um, and in excess of $50 million is being provided every year for dementia-specific programs. The issues facing aged care, the aged care sector and people as they get to this, the uh, later years in their lives are very many and very complex. For those of us who have had and have relatives in aged care really understand this. It is very, very complex. The Royal Commission 
will see um, Australians providing a great deal of evidence in this space. In many instances, our aged care sector provides, in my view, some of the very best care in the world. And I can think of many such facilities in my electorate. And there are many that I would be more than happy to spend my last days and weeks and months and years if it comes to that, Mr Deputy Speaker. However, the incidents of elder abuse and people not being provided appropriate care are, um, will be examined by the Royal Commission. We do know that the, our government has made some significant changes in the aged care sector, legislating for new aged care quality standards, the first upgrade of standards in 20 years, and introduced a bill to create the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission, supported by $106 million to support better facilities, care and standards in aged care. We have ensured that the department has the power to inspect facilities and conduct spot audits. This has led um, to the closure of one aged care service per month, with more under sanction to improve their services. This is a really important part of what the government um, is doing, Mr Deputy Speaker. We are putting in place clear requirements for better standards and providing the resources and powers to police those standards and to shine a light on the problems that exist. And that's the whole point. These findings demonstrate the effectiveness of the measures we've been taking. So I want to congratulate the Prime Minister and Minister Ken Wyatt for taking this uh, decisive action. Mr. Speaker, Mr Deputy Speaker, this bill is a further step in, the go in our government's efforts to provide better quality care for uh, consumers of aged care services in Australia. It establishes a new single independent commission to, that brings together, streamlines and makes more efficient the functions of the Australian Aged Care Quality Agency, the Aged Care Complaints Commission and, from January 1, 2020, the Aged Care Regulatory Functions of the Department of Health. It brings together all issues relating to regulation in one body, which has the power to police the regulations it sets. The Commission will be responsible for promoting the confidence and trust of aged care consumers in, in the provision of services, including Commonwealth-funded aged care services. It will also promote engagement with aged care consumers and representatives within the aged care sector about the quality of care and services that are provided. It will be led by an independent aged care quality and safety commissioner. A single statutory office will enable flexible and responsive regulatory powers. Flexible and responsive, really important in the aged care sector. This will en enable a holistic, um, risk-based approach to aged care regulation. You know, Mr Speaker, um, many of the facilities that I see, and some in my electorate, were built many, many years ago. And we do know that the expectations of both families and people who, uh, um, uh, in, who are in aged care facilities has increased significantly. And the government is determined to ensure that the aged care system has at its heart the consumer and the consumer's care. Um, the, the consumers are at the heart of this reform, and that, um, to me, is the key in this space. On the complaint side, the Commission will have the powers to enforce the regulations it makes um, as a tough cop on the beat. Uh, the Commission will engage with aged care consumers to promote best practice models for the engagement um, and for providers, again um, showing how consumers are at the heart of this um, and the government's intention. Um, consumers are at the heart of these reforms. But, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, in, in concluding my remarks, I believe that it is up to all of us, whether we're family members, whether we're members of the community, whether we're those who work, the, the wonderful people who work in aged care. We all have a role to play. And I'll go back to my discussion about the, 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 the comments I made about the numbers of people who are in aged care facilities who never receive a visitor. If your families are not in the area, in some instances I can understand this, but 
When our relatives and when our dearly loved people are in aged care, it is up to each one of us to make sure that we get there as often as we can and love them in the same way when they are in aged care as we did when they were living in their own homes. Uh, thank